Welcome to The Woman's Connection. I'm Barry Louise Twiston, your moderator. The Woman's Connection is a program about events shaping women's lives and helping one gain authentic power on a personal or professional level. So won't you stay tuned? Ever gone past a flower and say, wow, how beautiful, I love the fragrance or walked by somebody wearing perfume and you say, oh my God, I'm gonna vomit. Well, I gotta tell you, we're gonna find all about what makes a good perfume, what doesn't make a good perfume, and how you can benefit from it. Now, the first woman who ever created perfume goes back to the second millennium. And in 2004, in Cyprus, they found a distillery that uh, to be the world's oldest surviving perfumes going back more than 4,000 years. I have Sue Phillips from Center Prizes, and she's going to share with us the minute details of selecting a fragrance for you. Welcome, Sue. Hello, so nice to see you, Barry. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Now, you got started in this business because you got tired of hearing people say, I don't want to smell like everybody else. Well, I've been in the fragrance industry for a while, and I've had some wonderful executive positions at Elizabeth Arden, Lancome, and then Tiffany & Company. And over the last few years, there's been a trend in perfumery from the classics to the designers to the celebrities, and now it's all about customization. Everybody wants to really express themselves through fragrance. And so personalization or bespoke perfumes are the latest rage. And I've actually been doing this for the last seven years in my perfumery uh, down in Tribeca. And the wonderful thing is that people love to reflect them, their, themselves and their individuality through perfume. What is the first thing people have to know? I mean, we've got lots of wonderful bottles here. We've got different color petals. Yes. So what's the first thing somebody needs to know? Well, first of all, people really need to know what do they like. And a lot of people don't know what they like. They don't know if they like fresh fragrances or florals or woodsy or oriental. So they might say, oh, I like such and such a perfume by such and such a designer or celebrity, but they don't know what category it falls into. So I've devised a sort of quiz, if you will, where people take their scent personality quiz and I ask questions like, you know, what kind of um, seasons do you like? What kind of fabrics do you like to wear on your skin? Uh, what kind of architecture do you like? And based on their answers, I can determine if they like fresh, floral, woodsy or oriental fragrances. And then we take them on a fragrance journey and you'll see all of my beautiful fragrances that I brought. We, I call them fragrance blends. And each blend is a beautiful perfume on its own, but the beauty is that they can be combined to be worn together. So based on the olfactive palette of perfumery, there are citrus notes and florals and woodsy and orientals and spicy and musks. And people don't really know what they all belong, what they all mean. But when you actually smell everyone and you evaluate them, you can say, oh, I like that. And it reminds me of something or, oh, this reminds me of a bad memory, or this reminds me of my first kiss. So fragrance is very visceral. It's, it's, it's wonderful. And by actually trying and smelling all the different blends, you get to know which ones you like and which ones you don't like, and then you combine your own and create your own fragrance. Do you create a fragrance for a season? So right now, it's all about bespoke perfumery, and it's really not about seasons. Although some people might say, you know, we're going into fall, so I like something a little bit warmer and a little bit more smoky and a little bit more spicy. Of course, in spring or in summer, you want something fresh and vibrant and alert and sparkling. And then some people just say, you know, I have my favorite fragrance. I've worn this fragrance for years. This is the type of fragrance I like, and I don't want to deviate from it. So it's really all about choice. It's all about personalization. And the beauty is that we have something for everybody, for men and for women. Now, fragrances, okay. would you say this is lime? So, so I, the olfactive family, basically, um, there are seven or main, eight main fragrance families. Citrus, uh, florals, woodsy, spicy, uh, herbaceous notes, chypre. And I'll tell you about chypre because that's very interesting. 
Um, and then I devised, uh, developed them into four categories. The greens would reflect the fresh, beautiful, light, fresh fragrances, which I'll show you here. So this is um, basically, so this is a light, fresh, citrusy fragrance. It smells almost like lemon. Lemon and lime and oranges and mandarin and neroli. And then here is a fruity fragrance. And we always dip them in bladder strips because it's the most neutral way to smell a fragrance. This is a lovely, vibrant, luscious, fruity note with pomegranate and berries. Oh, and that's lovely. Isn't that lovely? It's very edible, very gourmand. And then we have something called herbal or the herbaceous note, which is actually um, in France, uh, it's called fougère which is a French word for meaning the fern, the green leaves. And this is very much like going into a spa, aromatherapy. Ooh. Isn't it relaxing? There's a lot of lavender in there. So those are the sort of fresh, citrus, uh, fresh notes. And then we go into the florals. And I didn't bring a lot of florals, but um, the floral fragrances are the but largest the category. And um, because there's so many beautiful florals. So this one is one of my favorites. Oh, I love this one. So that one is a rose. I call Ooh. it exotic rose. It's got notes of cognac and clove and spicy notes and a hint of violet leaf. So the rose is really lovely. And now a lot of people say, oh, they don't like rose because it reminds them they're, you know, it's old fashioned. But you know what the truth is? Rose is coming back. And rose notes with a little hint of cognac and spice is just exotic. It's smoldering. Well, how do you stop from sneezing all day long? Cause Great question. Um, it all depends on ingredients and the quality of ingredients. I will tell you honestly, I have been in the industry for a long time. I've never heard of more people having complaints about fragrances giving them headaches and allergies than I have in the last five or six years. And that's because many ingredients have been um, either discontinued and they try and find new ingredients and the quality is not as good as the previous ones. And so there are many, many fragrances that are being launched that truly are synthetic. There are chemicals. There are very fine synthetics, and there are very fine chemicals, but there are also some cheap ones. And the fragrances that give people headaches and allergies haven't really been up to the quality. And so I have been, I've been doing this for the last seven years, and I will tell you, I honestly never once had anybody who's complained of a headache or an allergy with my fragrances because they're beautiful, they're high quality, and they're just magnificent. Well, that's great because I know we had a discussion before that I wear joy and I right. sneeze my head off. It's well, you're sitting now and you've been at this table for a while and there's no hint of a sneeze with you. No. Now, this is a beautiful fragrance called Heady Floral. That's very sensual and, and, and sort of very feminine and lots of beautiful jasmine and gardenia. So then you can see we go along the fragrance sort of palette. We had the fresh, we had the floral, and now we're into the sort of woodsy and the spicy. So um, so I guess that's what the gold and the brown is The gold is and the for. brown are. So one of the first ones I have is a musk. Now, interestingly enough, musk, I put it in the woodsy family, but it's really an, from an animal, and it's from the deer or the civet cat. Now, none of my fragrances are made from animals or animal testing. Don't but, like it. But this is a very slight musky, and it's made from a plant. So that's okay. That's good. Now, this one, this is actually a um, sandalwood. Sandalwood is a wonderful new fragrance that people are loving because it really is sensual. It's, it's very creamy. Sandalwood is used a lot in men's fragrance as well as women's fragrances. And then we have something actually which you mentioned at the start of your show um, that one of the oldest fragrances was comes from Cyprus. So this is actually a, a fragrance that I call Mossy and it's actually a Chypre. So Chypre is from the French word chypre, meaning cypress. And it's actually interesting because it's very much like an enchanted forest. It's wow. earthy, it's mossy, it's got patchouli notes, it's, it's leathery, it's very, very bold. Um, and perfumers have been looking for interesting ingredients for centuries. They travel around the world, they look at plants, they look at animals, they look at foods. And legend has it that the perfumers were traveling in the island of Cyprus in the Mediterranean, and they stopped by the island of Cyprus, and they were overwhelmed with the beautiful aromas wafting up on the island. 
So one of the French perfumers said, qu'est-ce que c'est? Nous sommes, où sommes nous? Where are we? And, the, and one of the guys said, nous sommes en Chypre, we are in Cyprus. We're in Cyprus, and they loved the aromas wafting up on the island of Cyprus, and so they gave the category of this wonderful, earthy, mossy, patchouli fragrance the name Cyprus, Chypre. Nice two, honor. Two years ago, I went to Chypre, I went to Cyprus with my daughter because I really wanted to experience that, and it's now so built up that there's no <laughs> aroma wafting up on the island, but there are a lot of little stores <laughs> selling Chypre fragrances. <laughs> <laughs> and then as we continue our fragrance journey, we're now in the oriental family. Oriental meaning spicy and ambery. And so here is a beautiful um, fragrance or blend, which I call balsamic. Now, this is actually balsamic vanilla. It's mm. not, it's from the balsam tree and vanilla notes. And it's sweet, it's not cloying, it's got a beautiful sweetness. And then here is the spicy which is just reminiscent of what we're in now, fall. Spicy notes, which is cumin, coriander, ginger. Oh, that's nice. Um, so, so what we've done, we, and I have many more perfume blends, but I just bought a few today. So the idea is once you've taken your scent personality quiz, we then take you on a fragrance journey, you evaluate all the blends, and then you can actually select two or three or four that you like, and maybe you can decide which ones you are. Oh, that's lovely, you smell that. So each of my blends is a perfume on its own, but you can actually combine them. How does that smell? It smells nice, but... You might want something with it. I like the lavender and I liked uh, the rose. Okay, so let's find the lavender and the rose. Here we are. I think you have something in your hand. That's a little, there's that. Um, so here we go. There's the rose. Okay. And here's the lavender. And which else did when did you like? I think you liked the spicy. You told me you liked the spicy. Yeah, there was one that was spicy. Let's see. And you liked the vanilla, I think. Oh, the vanilla with the balsamic. Yes, the balsamic. I think that makes it a little and here's the strong. spicy. See what you think about that. So the idea is you mix and you match and you find some blends that you love and that reflects your individuality and your chemistry. That's a little, yeah. To me, I'd wear this winter. Okay, yes, because of the spicy, exactly. Now, if you wanted something a little bit more summery and fresh, then we'd sort of go towards this end of the palette, the citrusy, the, the sort of where the lighter notes are. So it's almost like the way you eat is the way you would wear your perfume or what you would wear. You know, it's, it, the truth is that with fragrance, as with food, as with music, and as with art, there's a beginning, a middle, and an end. And um, you're absolutely right. You know, in food, we have the hors d'oeuvres, we have the main course, and then the dessert. And in music, you have your overture, your main theme, and your finale. And then in fragrance, you have your top note, your middle note, and your bass note. And in fact, here is a little chart of how fragrances are constructed with the, with the pyramid or the triangle. You can see the top notes, the middle notes, and the base notes. And the top notes are usually the lightest ones. They're very light, they're bright, they're citrusy, they fly off the, the shelf. And then you have the middle notes, which are usually the florals or the spicy notes, and then the base notes are the deeper, the darker ones. So there's, there's fragrances all about art and science. It's really creative. It's, it's, it's a mixture of art and science, and you have to know which elements and which ingredients go to, together in order to create something quite beautiful. Is there a proper way to wear perfume? I'm so happy you asked me that question. We have to go back to the French, and the French have been wearing perfume for centuries. So I used to go to Paris very often on business when I developed the fragrances for Tiffany and Burberry and Trish McAvoy and Avon and so on. And the perfumers always used to say, oh, you Americans, you have no idea how to wear the perfume. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? Ah, oh, we in France, we have been wearing perfumes for centuries. We know that the fragrance rises as the body heat warms the, perf as the, body heat warms the perfume. So we have to apply the fragrance from the bottom up, at the ankles, behind the knees, at all the pulse points where the perfume is going to be pulsating. 
in between the thighs, in the bosoms, and all the pulse points over here and over here. She said, what do the Americans do? A spritz here and a spritz here. And who do they attract? <laughs> the birds and the clouds. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, there is a right way. First of all, always wear fragrance on the skin because your skin really needs to warm the fragrance. Some people say you spray fragrance in the air and walk into it. Well, if you're spending hundreds of dollars on a beautiful perfume, you don't want to waste it in the air. So you don't want it to in interfere with your uh, shampoo or your conditioner, your hairspray. So don't wear fragrance and spray it in the air because it'll fall on your hair and it'll distort it. Also, don't wear fragrance on clothes because some beautiful fabrics will get destro destroyed with the um, oils and the chemicals from the fragrance. So honestly, wear fragrance on beautiful, dry, um, clean skin, uh, not dry, but clean skin, and then if you want, if your skin is dry, then take something like an unscented almond oil and apply it on your skin and your body, and then the unscented oil will moisturize your skin, and then your beautiful perfume will adhere to your moisturized skin. Oh my goodness. <laughs> there's, a, there's a science to this. Well, thinking about it, if you start from the bottom up and you work your way all the way up, A, you're going through perfume quite yes. fast. And to me, that could be overkill. Well, Spe it also depends on the fragrance. So sometimes, if you, ha if you know, people sometimes will use um, a household soap, uh, like a deodorant, deodorant soap, which is very harsh and it has a lot of chemicals in it. Now that's very harsh, and that's going to counteract the beautiful perfume that is a natural, high-quality perfume. So you just have to judge it. I mean, if something is very strong. Don't use so much of it. Um, if you're going to wear a daily deodorant soap, then try and counteract that with a lovely, lightly scented or unscented body lotion so that your fragrance can you know, um, adhere to it. But perfume is, is magical. It's, mis it's mysterious. It's, it's wonderful. It makes you feel good. And so uh, I would rather have people spending more money on fragrance that fits their body image and their character and their personalities than wearing what everybody else wears, and then there's no distinction at all. What would you say, besides the bottle that you put it in, is the most expensive part of creating a perfume? Well, I will tell you from a marketing standpoint, uh, I've been in the fragrance industry for a while, and I've worked with some wonderful companies, and we always say in the industry that what gets people to the counter is all the outer sort of framework part the bottle, the packaging, the marketing, the advertising. And those are the sort of elements and the attributes that lure people in, that attract people. But what makes people come back is the actual fragrance itself and the actual juice. We call it the juice, which I don't really like that term, but in the industry we call it the juice. And the truth of the matter is that what it's, it's like, you know, you need something to attract people. So it's all the outer elements, the bottle, the packaging, the advertising. But what makes people really loyal to their fragrance is the absolute beautiful perfume itself. And so the most expensive part should be the fragrance ingredients itself, but usually it's the packaging, usually it's the advertising, usually it's all the marketing. And at the very end becomes the fragrance ingredient itself. I have done something totally different. I have put all my sort of investment into the juice itself, into the product itself, because I know how important it is when people try the fragrance, they want to say, oh, it's beautiful, I love it. So I have really sort of done an about turn, a reversal. I've put the money and my sort of research into the perfume itself, and now the next step is for me to have magnificent, beautiful bottles. What constitutes something more expensive, like this bottle versus this bottle, as far as the ingredients um, or it's, where it comes from? Well. The, uh, you're talking about the packaging? No, I'm talking about the, the actual uh, ingredients. The juice. So the juice, you know, there are, that, that's a great question. So again, there are certain areas in the world that specialize in certain crops. So for instance, India has the finest sandalwood. Um, my sandalwood is from India. There are also, there's also sandalwood from, from, the, from the Middle East. Uh, there are certain ambers from the Middle East, and there are cert certain ambers elsewhere. Uh, Bulgarian rose oil uh, is very, very expensive. So certain areas in the world 
are known for the ingredients based on the weather, the climate, the crops, the earth, and that kind of thing. Um, and so if you think about a, a household cleaner, a household sort of citrus furniture cleaner that has uh, a lemon kind of scent, well, you can get a big bottle of spray for $9.99. And you can imagine the amount of fragrance in that bottle of spray for $9.99. The quality is not as good as a beautiful bottle of maybe a $250 bottle of perfume that has a very heavy, not so heavy, but very expensive quality lemon oil or mandarin or bergamot oil. So it's again, it's, it's really the ingredients. Um, there are certain ingredients. For instance, um, there's an ingredient called ambergris. We shorten it to amber. And ambergris actually comes from the sperm whale. Oh, gee. And again, I told you that <laughs> perfumers are looking for interesting <laughs> ingredients. So again, you know, hundreds of years ago, uh, when perfumery was first starting, they understood that certain ingredients caused the sperm whale to regurgitate. And they would eat something like cuttlefish. Now, cuttlefish destroys the stomach lining. And in order to get rid of the, the, the cuttlefish and the, the irritation, the sperm whale would, that's the male whale, would regurgitate, and a sweet, sticky substance washed up on the shore. Now, people have said to me, you mean that's whale vomit? <laughs> and it is. <laughs> and what happened was this sweet, sticky substance was discovered by these perfumers scouring the earth for wonderful ingredients, and they came across this sweet, sticky substance. They said, mmm, this smells wonderful. And they started to harvest it, but it became so expensive because you can imagine how much has to wash up on the shore to be collected and harvested and to yield an, a kilo or a pound of, of ambergris pure fragrance oil. So it, it became, you know, almost prohibitive, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars for an ounce of um, or a kilo of ambergris oil. So now, again, certain companies are trying to reflect that and, and um, duplicate it with different chemicals and different natural ingredients so that it's affordable and it still gives the same beautiful quality of beautiful ambergris oil. If you smell ambergris, it's, it's amazing. It's sweet. It's wonderful. And it's male. So wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I, do women wear it? Or yes, men? absolutely. Oh, okay. it's, it's one of the ingredients in the sort of base notes. You know, you have the top notes, which are the light, bright ones, the middle notes, which are the florals, and then the base notes, which are the sort of warm, spicy, and sexy. and sexy, deeper notes. And ambergris or amber is definitely used in male as well as female fragrances. And by the way, what's interesting is there is no such thing as a male or female ingredient. So many people say, well, you know, I, 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 spicy notes are for males. No, no, no. Spicy notes could be for women too. It's just the question of how things are are developed and how things are formulated to determine whether it would be a woman's fragrance or a man's fragrance. But ingredients are ingredients. There's no, there's no uh, connotation of sexual orientation. And it would also have to do with the way it's combined with other exactly. fragrances, exactly. too. Exactly, exactly. So what is the best way to store or preserve your perfume? Wonderful. You're asking wonderful questions. <laughs> You know, again, perfume, when they're natural, and you can see the different colors, you can see some are light and some are dark. Well, that's because of the, um, the natural elements. So fragrances should really be cared for in a very special way. Don't expose them to very high heat. Don't expose them to very cold temperatures. Don't put fragrance in fr the fridge. And don't put fragrance next to an air conditioner. And don't put fragrance next to a heater because the beautiful chemicals of the molecules will be destroyed. And ultimately what will happen is the fragrance will dissipate. So my suggestion is keep fragrance or keep your bottle in a cool, dark space um, away from direct sunlight. And if you have a drawer, put it in a drawer. I know some perfume bottles are beautiful and you want to show them. Um, and you can always show them once your fragrance is empty. But Try and keep it away from direct sunlight and direct heat or cold. You say that taste and smell are very closely related. Yes. How so? How so? But the thing of it is, is that I think about 
your different fragrances, and some of them I can smell really potent, yes. others I can't. Right. And it's the same with tasting food. Right. And then if somebody gives me a glass of wine, oh, can't you s taste this notes, or right. taste that note or taste? And it's like, it's lost on me. I know I like it or I don't like it. Well, what happens with fragrance is our sense of smell is actually our strongest sense after sight. And this is the one sense that is actually connected to the olfactory bulb, which is housed right here in between the eyes on the back of the nose. And it is the one sense that connects memory and emotions on the one hand. And it's also our sense of smell is related to the sense of taste. So you know what happens when you have a cold. You can't smell and you can't taste. And everything just tastes like mush. And that's because they're very, very connected. Our sense of smell and our sense of taste are connected. And so it's very often that we actually do wonderful events where we talk about how smell and taste are connected. We've done scent and wine pairing events because so much of the, of the uh, aroma in wine is the bouquet. So you want to sniff the bouquet. You want to sniff and you want it in a, in a Cabernet Sauvignon, which is a light, citrusy, sparkling wine. It's very akin to a citrus fragrance. So there's a correlation between the Cabernet Sauvignon, which is a light, citrusy, bright, sparkling wine, and the citrus notes. And then, of course, the Cabernet is um, a little bit fruitier. It's got cherries and peach notes and plum notes, and it's deeper, and you can actually sense that. So you can actually... Uh, have some wonderful scent and wine pairing dinners and events, which we've done. Uh, we've also actually done a dinner. We've done several scent dinners where we take every course and we pair it with a blend. So I call them sip, sniff, and savor events. <laughs> <laughs> so there's been so much publicity in marketing. You get Elizabeth Taylor's got her own special blend. Justin Bieber has got his own blend. Lady Gaga's got her own right. blend. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of fragrances. Every year, there are about a thousand fragrances launched at all channels of distribution, high end, medium end, you know, online even, and of course, you know, uh, in, dis in department stores. And what's happened is people are really becoming confused. There are so many thousands of fragrances. And what's happened is there's a backlash. So now, because of this trend that is now reversing, people want to reflect who they are. And customization or bespoke is really happening. And so uh, the great thing is that you don't have to wear what everybody else wears. You can really reflect who you are with a bespoke perfume. And I think that this trend is, is wonderful because you don't have to follow the trend. You don't have to wear citrus in summer and earthy and woodsy in winter. You can do whatever you want and create your own fragrance and be happy in the fact that you are reflecting who you are through your fragrance. That's great. Now, I'd love to make a fragrance for you. I'd love it. Okay, which ones do you like? Oh, geez. Well, you, I, know, I know which one, you, so let me see. Pull the trigger. Okay, and I think you like the spicy and the lavender and the, I don't think I have a spicy yet. And the balsamic. Wait for the balsamic. Is that the one? How do you know how much to add of each I one? always add exactly the same amount, uh, equal amount. This is my own personal. Oh! Thank goodness I wasn't wearing perfume. Yeah. Okay, so that's great. Now I know what the feathers are all for. Lovely. You like that? Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. And now um, I have one for Mr. Matt. <laughs> one for you. Thank you. What do you like? I have no idea. I'm going to give you a woodsy and musky and mossy. That sounds like me. <laughs> this is lovely. Wow. Okay. 
everything was very quickly, but normally I would do a, a little. And here's a spray for you. This is for Nat. Watch out. Sue, so this has just been fantastic. In the closing moments of the show, yes. what would you like to leave the audience with? I would like to say to the audience that don't be nervous about wearing fragrance. Honestly, it is the most beautiful feeling when somebody greets you and they hug you and they say, oh, you smell wonderful. It's such a validation. It's such a feeling of, wow, I am who I am and I, f and I smell good and, I, and I'm giving a wonderful sort of feeling of confidence. Um, so many times people go to stores and they get attacked and uh, by the people who are spraying. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be that way. Find something that you love. Find a fragrance that reflects who you are and be confident in the fact that what who you are is, you know, how you want to be reflected and your fragrance can do that for you. Uh, if you haven't noticed by now, I'm passionate about perfume. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sue, thank you so much for joining me. I mean, this has been such an education. I just can't believe it. I mean, it's like, oh my goodness, this is wonderful. Well, and I thank hope you. you've learned something about creating your fragrance and what to do and what not to do when you're wearing it. Love to hear from you. Please write us here at the Woman's Connection. Bye now. <laughs>